Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com, and you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. Right now, I want to talk to you about screen scrapers, and specifically screen scraping multiple PDF files. I had a tutorial earlier on how to do it to just one, but nobody does it to just one. Here, I'll show you how to do it to many. So to start this off, I'm going to create a new project, and I'll call it Multiple Screen Scrapes. And as that project's being created, I just wanted to show you the PDF files that I've got. I've got a number of PDF files here. They all follow the same structure. What I want to scrape is this section here. I want to scrape all of the different line items. These are all in this folder named Orders. So you can see the couple of different files here. They're all a little bit different, have a little bit different data but they all follow the same basic structure. And so it's this stuff that I wanna get. I wanna get that from each of the different files. And it's this column that I'm interested in. I wanna get data from that last column. So I wanna go through all of these files. You can imagine maybe I wanted to tally up the individual line items for every invoice for some reason. That's sort of the thing that I'm gonna achieve here. So that's what I wanna do. Be able to go through each of these different files here. There's three, but there could be 30 or 300. and as I'm doing that, screen scrape and grab access to that last column in the row. Okay, so how do I do it? Well, the first thing I need to do is start off with a for each loop. So I'll throw that for each loop onto the page. And I wanna go through every single file that's in that directory. So it's directory.getfiles, and then you just say the name of the directory in which all those files are located and that is orders, even though they're all invoices. Okay, so from there, the next thing you wanna do is start a process for each file. So I find the start process option, bring it in there, and the process that I wanna start is that process associated with each file that I'm looping through, the PDF file. So that starts a process, and along with the process, I wanna be able to work with the Adobe Acrobat Reader window, so that then means I also have to go in here and look for the attach process, or sorry, attach window process. I guess it's not a ah, process, it's an activity. I drop it on here and it says, what window do you want to attach to these running processes? And I gotta go find my Acrobat Viewer, then click Indicate Window, click on Acrobat Viewer, and then it says, okay, this is good. But it's actually not good, it's actually poison. And the reason why it's poison is because inside this selector, so you have to click on the hamburger, find the selector, you'll notice that it's hard-coded the invoice name there. And if you wanna loop through multiple PDF files, you can't have that. That's gonna cause problems at runtime. So make sure that's deselected, that's really, really important. Okay, so this is gonna allow us to go through each of the files in that orders folder one at a time and open them up in Adobe Acrobat window. What do I wanna do as I'm going through them? Well, I guess one of the things I like to do is scrape them. So that means coming up to data scraping, click this data scraping button, and it's gonna say, what do you wanna scrape? I'll click next, and then I'll come over to this PDF file. And even though I want to scrape this whole table. I only have to click one cell in this table and the tool will know what I'm talking about. I just clicked the number two and it said, okay, these are the cells that are in this table. This is what I'll bring in. Now, a couple of things to note. This is just the cells from one of the tables. We're going to do this in a loop. So it's going to get every single table. And the other thing too is there's a bunch of blank lines in here. I'm not going to check for the blank line. So when I do some output, you're going to see nothing printed out because it's going to be printing out data for those blank lines, but it's not a big deal. I just wanted to warn you about it. Now, this data scraping is not where I want it to be. This data scraping should be up here in this do activity. It's easily fixed. I just drag it up there and now it's in there. However, I think if I go in here and edit the selector, you'll see that it once again referenced that one PDF file. Again, this is poison. If you want to loop through multiple files, you can't have a reference to a specific file. So I have to deselect that. You can click validate again and it's all fine, but just make sure you do that. That's going to cause all sorts of problems if you don't. Once that's done, well, I don't know, you can grab your data. What do you want to do? Um, it's up to you. I'm going to find a right line. The left line never works for me. 
I'm gonna find the right line, and this right line lets me just print out data. So I'm gonna throw it, oh, you know what, I can't do that. I wanna write out information about each row of this table. Of course, in order to do that, I have to loop through it. So I almost forgot that. I gotta add in a for each row loop. Now note, there's a for each loop, and there's a for each row. For each, poison. Okay, make sure you're using the for each row loop to go through each row in this data table. You have to specify the name of the data table. Now, if you've extracted data, you should be able to find the name of the data table right there where you click on the actual data extraction operation. It's right there, it's called extract data table. I'm gonna copy it, and then I'm gonna paste it in here. This allows me to go through each row. And what do I wanna do as I go through these rows? Well, I just wanna print out that fourth column. And the fourth column is just row at three because it's zero base counting dot two string. And just double checking on that. Yeah, so that should print out these numbers here. As I said, I'm gonna get blanks for all of these blank lines here, but I don't wanna make this video last five more minutes just to get rid of blank lines. So you'll have to deal with it. Um, but uh, I think that all looks pretty good. I guess I could close the process, which might be another thing to do at the end here, but I don't think that's necessary. I just want to make sure I've got uh, no errors there. I'm going through orders, file.toString. I've removed the reference to the file in both places. Make sure you've done it here as well. So that's gone. I've got a for each loop and I'm looping through it. Okay, so it's now time to actually run this. So click save, click run. You see it start opening multiple files, B2B, C3C. It's gone through all of those files and now if I go in and I look at the output you'll notice that it's output the values from the different PDF files so there's 40 there's 200 there's 60 there's 20 there's 80 and if I come over here there's we can come over here and see there's 20 there's 80 there's 40 there's 60 there's 200 there's 100 there's 100 now again I got some blanks here but that's just because there's some blank lines in the actual file here not because uh, not because of any problems but yeah that's it and that's all you have to do that's how easy it is to loop through multiple pdf files screen scrape them and then extract data from that screen scraping and there you go that's how you can screen scrape multiple pdf files at the same time now if you enjoyed that tutorial why don't you head over to the serverside.com i'm the editor-in-chief over there we've got all sorts of great enterprise software and development tutorials and articles so check it out if you're interested in my personal antics you can follow me on twitter at cameron mcnz and subscribe on youtube